Hello, today I'll be looking at the benefits of wetting the back of your watercolour paper. For most people, this tip will make it easier for them to create better paintings. One of the most common questions I get asked by my students is, do I wet my paper? Now when students ask that, they're, they're really referring to the front of the paper. I usually respond by saying, yes I do, but not the front. I almost always wet the back, however very rarely the front. I'm going to cover why you might want to wet the back of your watercolour paper, how much to wet it and when not to wet it as much, if at all. At the end I will also talk briefly about when you might want to wet the front of your paper. There are four reasons why you should wet the back of your paper. The most important reason is that it will give you a great deal more time to paint before the surface of your paper dries. This also means there is much less need to use a spray bottle to keep the surface of your paper at the right wetness level for wet on wet passages. I started the wetting the back of my paper about two years ago when looking for solutions to the problem of my students work drying too fast. In the past I used a spray bottle to keep the surface of my painting at the right wetness level, and I still do, but nowhere near as often. Where before I would use the water spray bottle multiple times in every painting, I now might only use it once or twice in one out of ten paintings. The second reason is that it lets you paint on flat paper without any cockles. Wetting the back sufficiently makes the paper expand and sit very flat on your painting board. This makes it much easier to paint on. Thirdly, you don't have to rush. It is often said that a good watercolour is a quick watercolour. However, this technique lets you slow down a little, giving you more time to think as you paint. Finally, as the paper will have more water in it, the paint will sit closer to the surface. This makes it easier to lift paint for corrections or to create positive shapes from out of the background. This can be quite useful for painting subjects such as dramatic skies, where a lot of edge softening and adjustment might need to be done. This point mainly applies to non-staining paints, however. Those paints that stain are very hard to lift, if at all possible. So how much should you wet your paper? To answer this question, you must understand why paintings dry too fast. I used to think that it was because the surface water just evaporated very quickly. But the real reason is that the paper below the surface acts like a sponge and it can absorb a great deal of moisture. After doing my drawing, I start by wetting the back quite heavily twice. Then, while the paper is absorbing that water, I mix the starting colours for my painting.
once I've mixed enough paint of the right colour and tone, I go back and wet the back of my paper again. I then carefully lift the paper and wet my waterproof board as well. Just wetting the back of your paper once is not enough. I mainly use 185 GSM paper. If you paint with thicker uh, 300 GSM paper, you might need to wet your paper twice as much. You will know when your paper has absorbed enough water when it sits totally flat on your support board. And when you turn it over the right way, the front surface should be cool to touch, but not wet. I have heard of some artists that wet both the front and back of the paper and then dry the front before painting on the surface. I don't see a need for this as you can end up needlessly removing some of the sizing on the paper surface. This would alter how the paper responds to your paint. Now for experienced artists this is probably not a problem, but it can make a difference for beginners. I almost never wet the front of my watercolour paper. The reason for this is if the working surface of your painting is wet, then you can only produce soft wet on wet edges. I like more edge variety in my work. My skies usually have wet on wet areas as well as lovely dry brush strokes. These I would not be able to produce on a wet surface. Remember, once you lay down some paint, you have effectively wet the surface of your paper. If you go back into the wet wash, you are now creating wet on wet shapes. Also, if you spend time mixing your starting colours, testing them for colour and tone, your tones will be incorrect if you then paint them onto a wet surface. The water on top of your paper will dilute your mixtures and give you lighter tones. So, when would I wet the front of my paper? If I wanted to slosh paint around on the surface of my painting, then I might possibly wet the front of my paper in that situation. With a very wet surface, you can pick up your board and very easily make the, make the paint flow around your painting. Another occasion might be when doing a fog or misty scene. In that case, most of the edges are soft with no white paper preserved. Then, provided you can make an allowance for the surface water diluting your paint, you could wet the front to make it easier to create subtle wet on wet passages. And now when would I not wet the back of my paper? If I'm painting plain air in a cold environment, wetting the back might mean that the painting takes too long to dry. In that case, I don't wet the back. Also, if I'm just doing a small sketch or using a watercolour sketchbook, then I don't wet the paper in that situation either. You have to think about the effect you're trying to create and the environment you are painting in 
before deciding whether to wet the back or the front of your paper. Hopefully this video will make it easier for you to make an informed decision. If you've enjoyed the video and not yet subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed whenever I post a new video. And please share this video to anyone else you feel could, could benefit from it. I look forward to seeing you again in the future.